Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Many of you will have heard of the incredible and somewhat unbelievable Kailasa Temple, the largest and most magnificent rock-cut Hindu temple located at the Ellora Caves in Maharashtra, India. I made a video on this site 3 years ago and I've only just realised it's had 1.4 million views in that time, making it one of the most watched videos on this channel. I will be making an updated and more in-depth video on this site in the coming weeks. But before we get back to that, I want to put another incredible site on your radar, and this one is known as Vituvan Coil. It is located in Kalagamale, a Panchayat town in the Thuthikudi district of the South Indian state of Tamil Nadu. It was made in the 8th century and is attributed to the early Pandya dynasty. It is dedicated to the Hindu god Shiva. Incredibly, just like the Kailasa temple, it was also cut straight out of the hillside. It is one complete piece still connected to the bedrock, an immaculate work of art that was surprisingly left unfinished. No stone has been added to this temple. It was created by taking stone away, through excavation, making it an incredibly impressive feat by ancient Indian stonemasons, especially because the bedrock here is granite. Because of the size, complexity and intricate nature of the Kailasa temple, Vituvan Coil falls in its shadow and is rarely spoken about. Praveen Mohan made a video on the site in 2018 and I came across it whilst researching this week. Praveen has speculated and other websites have too that Vituvan Coil could actually be a prototype, a scale model of the Kailasa temple due to a number of similarities between the two structures. Vituvan Coil is precisely a quarter of the size of Kailasa Temple. Both are monolithic rock cut structures and both were built in the 8th century. The stonemasons would have employed the same rock cutting techniques and technology, which is a top to bottom approach. Both temples are dedicated to Lord Shiva, the style of sculptures are very similar, and they both face towards the east. Of course Kailasa Temple is much larger and far more complex and Vituvan Coil is really just a tower. So to claim it's a prototype can't really be true as they are not exactly the same. I've linked Praveen's video in the description below anyway as it provides good information and great footage of the site. Most experts disagree with Praveen's idea and they say that the two are not linked. They have similarities, of course, but also differences, and Vituvan Coil is a unique structure in its own right, built by the Pandya dynasty, whilst Kailasa Temple was apparently the work of a Rashtrakuta king. The main problem with linking the two structures is the distance between the two sites. Vituvan Coil is located 1,400 kilometers to the south, making the idea that a Kailasa Temple prototype was built so far away extremely unlikely. But there are no inscriptions at Vituvan Coil, and Praveen, as well as local people, doubt the official interpretation that this is the work of a Pandya king, because the temple itself feels out of place at this site. The monolithic style is unusual in its location, and some people think that the stonemasons that carved the Kailasa Temple carved this structure first before travelling north through India and then constructing their masterpiece at the Ellora Caves. The Vituvan coil structure itself does raise questions. Why was it unfinished and abandoned after so much work had already been done? Why didn't they just finish this incredible work of art after doing so much already? Is it because the specialist stonemasons left this part of India? If the two structures are not made by the same people, surely the similar architectural style does indicate that, at the very least, the Rashtrakutas of the north and the Pandya kings of the south must have had some kind of cultural or political relationship in the 8th century. Yet, some historians even dispute this. There is a legend attached to Vituvan Coil, which is certainly worth mentioning in this video. Locals say that the temple came about because of a family rivalry between a father and a son, as they argued about who could build the best temple. 
The son worked at the bottom of the hill, and the father worked further up. The son claimed his father would never complete his shrine, which infuriated the father who killed his son, but not before the son had finished his work, which is apparently the region's Morrigan Temple. After killing his son, the father never completed his work, and that's the reason why the Tuvan Coil remains unfinished to this day. Another similar legend says that a father wanted his son to take time to learn the stonemason trade, but when his son started chiselling the inner chambers of a shrine, it enraged the father who killed him. In the Tamil language, the Tuvan Coil has two meanings. One is Heaven of Sculptors, and the other is Temple of Slayer. Maybe the double meaning gave rise to the myth, or maybe the myth gave rise to the name. We'll never know for sure. Whatever the truth about its origins and identity of the builders, we do have to take note of the incredible nature of the structure. It stands at 25 feet in height, is carved from solid hard granite bedrock, giving the appearance of a blooming lotus, with hills surrounding it on three sides as it looks out to the rising sun in the east. That's a better way of describing it than my first thought, that it looked a bit like an armoured tank. No disrespect intended. The whole structure is intricately carved, with Shiva, attendant deities, dancers and animals like lions and monkeys, and even though it is unfinished, it stands out as a truly incredible piece of ancient Indian architecture in the Tamil region of India. Apparently the art is indicative of the Pandyan style of the period, and that is the reason for the association with the Pandya dynasty but it's hard to deny its association with the other Indian monolithic structures, such as Kailasa Temple, even though such a large distance separates the two. There are many incredible examples of ancient rock-cut architecture right across India. In recent videos we've seen the incredible Rani Kivav Stepwell, we've seen the granite carved Mamalapuram structures, there are the rock cut and intricately decorated Kala and Baja caves near Mumbai, not to mention the Ellora Caves and Kailasa Temple. What this shows is that India as an entire country has a real history of creating incredible works of art from some of the hardest rocks to work, and they worked it on a very large scale. Over the coming months, one thing I want to find out more about is the origins of this countrywide stoneworking culture, where the knowledge came from, and how it spread across the entire country, used by different states and kingdoms, as well as for both Buddhist and Hindu structures. India has some of the greatest ancient architects in history, and I'll show you some more fantastic examples in the coming weeks. So please subscribe to Ancient Architects, and click the bell icon for updates. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.